Hi folks, Will at LR Workshop. Soft brake pedal on a Defender is up there in the holy duality of problems with vibration through the steering as the problems caused by a multitude of things and can create a lot of time and effort to finally solve. The typical mantra goes, start with the easy and the cheap stuff first and work your way down the list. The list goes something like, could be old brake fluid, air in the brake fluid, it could be calipers, pads, discs, or also lack of vacuum pressure being accumulated, vacuum pressure being lost, a faulty servo, faulty vacuum pump, a leak in the system somewhere, leaking brake pipes can also cause this. It's always important when working with problems like this to be able to diagnose and describe the problem effectively because that will help you to isolate the issue, fix it potentially, and then maybe move further on in the list when you've ruled something out. My brake pedal's never been that great on the Defender. I've changed a lot of things over the years. And really it came from the realization that my brake pedal was quite good sometimes but sometimes it wasn't that good i would drive and then there'd be a soft brake pedal and then i would move off and then very soon i would brake again but the brake would be really solid and really felt really good and then the longer i traveled the further i traveled the worse the brake pedal would get so that was really odd if it was the other way around and let's say you had a good brake pedal if you braked soon after braking previously it would be feel worse that would probably mean you were using up vacuum and the vacuum wasn't being replenished quick enough to get a good pedal on the second time whereas this was the opposite relatively soft to begin with and then it would get harder afterwards but the further i would drive without touching the brake pedals it would then be soft again there was no i would say probably a few hundred meters up to half a mile would probably be the distance where the pedal would become soft again and this is caused by adjustment of the wheel bearings being slack such that the hub moves relative to the caliper it wobbles the pistons back into the caliper and so the first press of the brake pedal you have to push the pads back towards the the brake disc so really to do this properly you need either assistant or in this case i got a camera underneath the vehicle and I, you basically jack up each wheel and feel for the wheel bearing play and this is where the camera really helps because it, you see wobbling the wheel here the tire is moving so when you're sat when you're on the outside pushing the tire it feels like there's a bit of play there but you're pushing the tire really what you want to, want to be looking at is the bit circled on the screen which is the the movement of the brake disc relative to the rest of the axle so here it is on the front right there's quite a bit of play there it's the same on the front left as play there as well when we move to the back right we actually see there's no play there the, the axle's moving because i'm wobbling the whole thing but there's no relative movement because this is the wheel bearing i worked on the most recently and then on the back left there's play there as well so we've got three wheels that have got play in the wheel bearings and that will be contributing to our poor braking on the first press so the wheel bearings need adjusting. I won't show you how to do that because there's loads of videos online about changing wheel bearings. But what I have is a box full of all the wheel bearing stuff I might need. So it's got new nuts in it. It's got washers. It's got the CV joint clip. It's got the cut bearing race for hammering in the new race. It's got wheel bearings in there, circlips, dust caps and oil seals. So I know this box, of, it's got everything I need to work on wheel bearings. So when taking the bolts out, I just leave the last bolt proud, then it gives you some great leverage to be able to lever the cap off. Typically, when you're putting the thing back together, that's when you'll start cleaning the bolts and cleaning things up. But what I find is you've got an open wheel bearing and then you're trying to get the crud out of the old Loctite out of the holes and it's just open and you and you try and blow it out and you'll just get crud falling into the wheel bearing. So I do this before I take the drive member off. I will clean up the threads of the bolts, wind the bolts in, wind them out, wind them in, wind them out, loosen up the old Loctite and then blow them out. And then I can be sure that there's no contamination that's got into the grease of the wheel bearing. And I'm happy to report this actually solved the problem with my brakes. They were a lot firmer than they were before. They're still not as I would expect from the factory, but they made a massive improvement. Here you can see me waggling the wheel after adjusting the bearings, you can see the difference it's made. I hope you found this video useful. Maybe it's one tip you can use in diagnosing your soft brake pedal or your soft brakes. In reality, you should be able to skid a Defender on tarmac with good working brakes. If you can't do that, then there's probably something degraded a bit within your braking system. Subscribe for more Land Rover videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.